Welcome back to Madman Review. So you want to go on a big game hunting trip? Well, good luck picking a cartridge for the job because there are over 125 of them to choose from. Anyone would be overwhelmed with the number of choices here. But don't worry, this is what this episode is all about. I picked five cartridges that I think are the best candidates for big game hunting. Keep in mind that many of those 125 cartridges are mostly good options. It might hurt to see that your favorite cartridge did not make the list, but trust me, it hurts me just the same because I had to pick only five. Also keep in mind that my recommendations here should not be the objective truth, because I'm expressing my own opinions. You don't have to agree with me, and it's totally fine if you disagree. Maybe you like some cartridges more than others, so who am I to judge? However, to lend some semblance of credibility here, I evaluated the cartridges on four factors. Power, cost, availability, and range. So without further ado, what are my recommendations? 416 Remington Magnum. Let's kick off this episode with a giant killer, the 416 Remington Magnum. Unless you're hunting elephants in Arnery Cape Buffalo for a living, you don't really need the 416 Rem Mag or any of its brothers. But Leonardo wouldn't be mauled by a bear and barely survive the encounter if he'd had a 400 grain 416 bullet at his side. What power is behind this? Well, you get 2,500 feet per second velocity and 5,550 foot-pounds of energy. This absolute brick will kill anything that moves so long as you nail that first shot. Chances are that you're only going to get one with the recoil, though. How much recoil? In a 9-pound rifle, you get about 70 foot-pounds of recoil. Your shoulder's going to be aching after a couple shots, but whatever's on the other end of your rifle will drop dead. It kills hard kicks even harder, which is partially why the 416 Remington Magnum is not as popular as other cartridges. That and the fact that not many rifles can take the cartridge. The cost of munition means that availability is low, but if you're in the market looking for other cartridges such as the 416 Rigby, 416 Ruger, or 458 Winchester Magnum, etc., the 416 Remington Magnum doesn't seem so bad. Of course, it doesn't matter which one of those you pick, your pocket will hurt at every purchase, your shoulder will hurt at every shot, and your target will drop with every hit. I say it's a fair compromise when you want maximum power in each shot. 375 H&H &H. Another tough decision I have to make is putting the 375 H&H &H on the list. But considering its availability, affordability, and effectiveness, I wouldn't be doing it justice if I didn't mention it. Of course, this is not the ideal cartridge for moose or elk, but it is good enough. Plus, you don't have to worry too much if you have to handle lions, bears, or elephants. Many consider Holland & Holland's belted magnum to be an excellent all-rounder, and I'm inclined to agree with that. It can handle every big game animal, even the ones that fight back. Of course, those animals have been downed by smaller cartridges such as the 30-06, 7x57 Mauser, or even the 22 long rifle. But you wouldn't want to bet on those. Sometimes you just want the thing dead, and the 375 H&H can do the job. It might even be mandatory in some places. The 375 packs a lot of punch. You get about 4,500 foot-pounds of energy if you shoot a 300-grain bullet from a 24-inch barrel using 78 grains of W760 powder. You can even load lighter bullets, such as 260-grain bullets, for better range. Of course, with great power comes great recoil, cost, rifle length, and weight. Navigating around the bushes will be a challenge. It'll kick your shoulder hard and even harder for the animal on the business end of that 26-inch barrel. The cost will also be quite significant. Evidently, the 375 H&H is for those with strong arms and deep enough pockets. You might be able to find cheaper and lighter alternatives that offer adequate performance, such as the 275 Ruger or the 9.3x62 Mauser, but availability and compatibility might be an issue. If you encounter these problems, then the 375 H&H might be the only option. 300 Winchester Magnum The 300 Winchester Magnum holds up very well to this day, despite having to keep up with all the modern and powerful 28 and 30 caliber rounds, this is still a reliable workhorse, and its versatility allows it to be relevant to this day. It powers the same bullets as the 308 and 30 odd 6 but delivers 300 to 500 additional feet per second. That means less drop and wind deflection, as well as more power delivered to the target. 
A 300 win hits harder than the 308 Winchester if they use the same 165 grain bullet at 250 yards. Of course, the thing that sort of holds it back is that you have to deal with a heavier rifle, longer action, longer barrel, more recoil, higher cost, and shorter barrel life. Of course, barrel life would only be a consideration if you shoot frequently, and you don't need to shoot that many rounds when you pack this much punch. How much exactly? Enough to tear a white tail in half at 100 yards when you consider that the cartridge can deliver about 3,400 foot-pounds of energy. Evidently, if you want something really dead, you get the 300 Winchester Magnum. But this also opens up an interesting possibility. You do not need that much power because you'd only do more damage to the meat than you need to. So you use lighter loads to about something akin to the 308 power level. That way, an 8-pound 300 Winchester Magnum pushing a 165-grain bullet from a 24-inch barrel would give you 3,250 feet per second and 32 foot-pounds of energy recoil. If you want to make the most out of the 300, you should use heavier bullets anywhere from 190 grain to 200 grain with a high ballistic coefficient. Your maximum point-blank range would be shorter, but wind deflection would be less, and you get more energy out of it. Although there are not that many rifles that are suitable for the 300 Winchester Magnum compared to the likes of the 3-8 Winchester or the 6-5 Creedmoor, there should still be plenty of good options to choose from. Also, I'm aware that there are more powerful 300 options out there, but none of them are really as widely available as the 300 Winchester Magnum. Many rifles support it, and so are the ammo manufacturers. 3-8 Winchester The 3-8 Winchester is a controversial option considering that there are plenty of other cartridges that can do a better job, such as the 260 Remington, the 7mm 08, and the 6.5 PRC. However, the reason why I picked the 308 and not the rest is that it's a jack of all trades. It's versatile and affordable. It can push the same bullet as the 30 6 but only 100 feet per second slower. Your target, be it an elk, moose, or deer, will probably not notice that slight difference. Another thing the 3 Another thing the 3 8 Winchester has going for it is the short action. It's about a half inch shorter than the 30 6 while the 30 6 can deliver a bit more feet per second depending on the bullet weight, the 3 8 can still keep up. It can take 100 grain to 200 grain bullets, but I'd argue that the sweet spot is the 165 grain bullets, but if you load 200 grain slugs, you get about 2400 feet per second and 2560 foot pounds of energy. At 200 yards, you still have about 1,876 foot-pounds of energy, and you're not giving any moose just a haircut with that much energy. Also, the recoil's not that bad. You can load the 3i8 Winchester into many short and light rifles and can still shoot quite comfortably. The short action takes away a bit of weight from the rifle. 48 grains of powder in a 3i8 can burn out in 20 to 22 inches of barrel. Put that in a 7-pound rifle with a 165-grain bullet, you get 2,800 feet per second, and you'd get hit with about 21 foot-pounds of energy and recoil. You can hold dead center out to about 310 yards and still hit the dome of your target, which is pretty generous. The 3 8 Winchester offers variety at a low-cost ammo as well, not to mention that it's not rough on the barrel and offers excellent accuracy. It does not really matter what kind of rifle actions you have, be it lever, brake, pump, auto-loading, bolt, or falling block, there's always at least one rifle that's chambered for the 3 8 Again, there are plenty of other cartridges that perform just as well, if not better, than the 3 8 Winchester, but you just can't beat its availability and affordability. Also, it's worth considering that the 3 8 might not be allowed for hunting purposes in certain jurisdictions, since it's a common military cartridge. 6.5 Creedmoor The 6.5 Creedmoor is a controversial choice, I know. The round delivers the same performance as the 6.5 by 55 Swede with much less recoil. Both can handle deer, moose, and brown bears. Compatibility is also no question. It's chambered in pretty much every firearm that's worth a dime. Just use loads from 90 grains to 147 grains and you're good to go. Since many precision competitive shooters use the 6.5 Creedmoor, ammo and rifles are usually made to squeeze the maximum performance out of the cartridge, it should go without saying, but of course you want as much performance as possible. Of course, you might find other 6.5mm cartridges that suit your specific needs better. Maybe you want more speed or short action versions. 
If you want a cartridge that does its job well and can punch holes into a moose without doing the same to your wallet, the Creedmoor is hands down the winner. You can find this cartridge pretty much everywhere at an affordable price. The recoil is very light, but not as light as the 6.5 Grendel or the 243 Winchester. However, it's a fair compromise when you have to power heavier bullets. The secret lies in the bullet. You see, when you use a 140 grain and heavier, 0.264 inch diameter, low drag shaped bullet, you can trim the ballistic coefficient down to 0.6 or so. In layman's terms, you minimize wind deflection, which is the most difficult part of trajectory estimation. Of course, that's not to say that the 6.5 Creedmoor is perfect. If you want some ammo to fight the Creedmoor advocates, you can look at muzzle velocity. Factory-made ammo delivers about 2,700 feet per second with 140 grain bullets. There are other 140 grain bullets that can surpass that, but those were made about a century ago. The Creedmoor is definitely lacking in terms of muzzle velocity. Then again, you don't really need that much speed if you have laser rangefinders and ballistic compensating reticles to set the holdover. Let's talk about energy next. Creedmoor definitely has it. If you use the 143 grain Hornady ELDX, you get about 2,700 feet per second and 2,315 foot-pounds of energy. For context, the 30-06 can push 150 grain at 3,000 feet per second and 2,998 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, that doesn't sound good for the Creedmoor, but keep in mind its ballistic coefficient allows it to retain this energy downrange. At about 700 yards, the Creedmoor still has about 1,000 foot-pounds of energy, whereas the 30 6 would have about 935 foot-pounds of energy. That much energy will do a lot more than giving the deer a tickle, although you should probably get closer to your target. Another thing we need to consider is the bullet diameter's relation to lethality. Unfortunately, it's a difficult subject to get into. We don't know for sure if a wider bullet will kill faster than a narrower one. Even if the narrower bullet carries more energy, the answer is not so clear-cut. How the bullet expands and twists makes it so that the original diameter is irrelevant for anything other than the size of the entrance hole. Regardless, the 6.5 Creedmoor can punch above its weight, that's for certain. Most jurisdictions permit its use as well. It's accurate, light on the recoil, making it a fun shooting experience for many hunters. And there you have it, folks. If you found this video informative, consider giving us a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified when a new episode comes out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.